We're going to start season two of our videos on mathematics by profiling some American mathematicians. We're going to start with the first African Americans to earn PhDs in mathematics. Here are the names of the first 14 African Americans to earn PhDs in mathematics, the dates they received their degrees, and the college at which they earned the degree. Here are a few random facts about some of the people in our list. Albert Frank Cox was the first African American to earn a PhD in mathematics in the United States. In fact, he was the first black person to earn a PhD in mathematics anywhere in the world. He was also a talented violin player and was offered a scholarship to study violin at the Prague Conservatory of Music in Europe, but chose mathematics instead. J. Ernest Wilkins entered the University of Chicago as an undergraduate when he was 13 years old. He was the youngest student in the history of the school. He earned his PhD in mathematics when he was 19. Wade Ellis was the first African American to become a faculty member in a predominantly white college. I have a personal connection here because I met Wade Ellis years ago in a restaurant in Monterey, California. David Blackwell enrolled at the University of Illinois when he was 16 years old. He received his PhD in mathematics when he was 22 years old. He has a connection to G.H. Hardy, who we met in our previous video series, and a possible connection to you if you take a finite math or statistics course in college. More on that in a later video. William Clater was the first African American to publish in a mathematics research journal, and he influenced the career of Katherine Johnson, one of the women depicted in the movie Hidden Figures. One of the reasons we profiled the mathematicians in our first set of videos is that they had to overcome barriers put in front of them to get their work in mathematics noticed and to continue to expand their discoveries. The first obstacle the people in our list had to overcome was the unequal educational system for blacks and whites in the United States during this period of time. To put this in perspective, in 1896, the U.S. Supreme Court upholds the separate but equal doctrine in their ruling in Plessy versus Ferguson. The education for blacks and whites can be separate, segregated, as long as the quality of that education is equal. It's not until 1954 in Brown versus the Board of Education that the Supreme Court strikes down Plessy versus Ferguson, ruling that segregation of children in public schools solely on the basis of race was unconstitutional. All of the first 14 are living under the separate but equal doctrine. And generally speaking, the schools may be separate, but they're not equal. And further, even if a young African-American with an aptitude for mathematics did get a good high school education in mathematics, most of the white colleges did not accept black students, and none of the historically black colleges and universities, as they are called now, offered PhD programs in mathematics. So how did they do it? I think you'll find the next series of videos interesting as we go into more detail to highlight the accomplishments of some of the people in our list, show how they overcame the obstacles in front of them to obtain a PhD in mathematics, and see if we can't learn something from their stories that apply to us today.